Hello everyone. Welcome to the first lecture of EC573 Advanced Embedded Logic Design Winter 2022 semester. In the first lecture, I'll give you the, the background about the embedded systems as well as why we are studying this course along with the course content. To begin with, we will discuss the what is the problem statement we are looking at in this course and so, so that we are clear about the problems we are going to find and the corresponding possible solution. If you look at this graph, you can see that on the x-axis, it's a year. On the y-axis, it's a market in billion US dollars. And if you see this uh, uh, link, you can see that it is something related to the cloud computing. So here you can see that there is a significant increase in the cloud computing market over the past few years. Why this has happened? This has happened because we are using our cloud services for our day-to-day -day task, office task, or all the data is being synchronized with the cloud. And second thing is that there is a significant increase in the IoT devices, which shares or communicates a lot of data with the cloud. These devices are usually sold as intelligent devices, but these are merely a data capturing devices, while the entire data processing happens in the cloud. So if you use these devices in the region where the network is poor, uh, then you will see that this device doesn't work. That means these are not the intelligent devices. These are merely the data capturing devices. But the cloud resources are limited. You can buy a large number of these devices, but the, all these devices are going to uh, demand more resources from the cloud and the, we have the limited cloud resources. For example, suppose that we use the Alexa or Google uh, devices and suppose that the, there are only 1 million people, means around 10 lakh people are there and they use these devices around 98 minutes per day. This means they are going to send around 94 TB of data. So we need a communication bandwidth to communicate such a large amount of data and we need a cloud resources to process this data. As we know that our population is around 3.8 billion on the earth. And if we use only three minutes per day, then the total amount of data corresponds to 11 picobyte. It's a huge data. Uh, with the uh, co-pandemic uh, kind of environments where, where we will see that the lot of opportunities from work from home uh, uh, type of uh, arrangement, then you can see that the use of such devices and the cloud is going to go up. Furthermore, we are talking about the industry 4.0, where we allow the machine to machine communication so that we can do the as much automation and the remote control as possible. And with this kind of uh, uh, technology, the f there will be a further demand from the cloud resources. So this is the one aspect. Second aspects are is the green or the environmental feasibility of these data centers or the cloud centers. Uh, the data centers consume significant amount of electricity because they need to maintain the proper temperature, which requires a significant efforts in the cooling. Otherwise your data may get corrupted. So you will see that most of the data centers, they are usually deployed near the sea so that you can use the water for cooling or near to the north region. Uh, you can check out the videos from the Google, Facebook, Microsoft, how they maintain their data center and how they are trying to make it energy efficient. But with the current trend of using, current trend of using the cloud uh, services, 
we are expecting that the overall energy consumption is going to go up by 20 percent by uh, its total energy consumption will be 20 percent of the overall earth's energy consumption by 2025 so one-fifth of the energy con consumed will be by the data center other than the environmental aspects there is a security and privacy aspects because the data which you are your data is being collected and sent to the cloud so you don't have the control of the data once it goes outside your uh, network so what happens to such data how and when it is used whether it is being used for the other purposes that's a, another challenge so the security privacy aspects are another data so again when the data is transferred outside your network it is susceptible to the cyber attack and you you can see that recently uh, there are a couple of cyber attacks where the iot devices are being used so iot devices are usually referred to as a cheaper devices less expensive devices and then uh, there is a less focus on the security of these devices so the companies who manufacture these devices may not have to have a significant expertise to make them as secure as possible and then uh, hackers can use these devices to uh, attack the your network so these are the issues are there and that's why the concept of decentralized intelligence age computing age ai distributed intelligence are being quite what does this mean this means that instead of having the entire processing in the cloud distribute your processing between the cloud your gateway devices as well as your edge devices so the aim is to make your edge devices slightly more intelligent so that they can reduce the load on the cloud and they can save some communication bandwidth so such kind of technology is being used in the iot network uh, wireless communication networks uh, robotics so uh, these are the things are being used also the advantage of this uh, uh, distributed uh, computing is that your latency can be reduced since you are you may not be dependent upon the cloud search uh, cloud for certain kind of services those services can be handled at the edge level or at the gate level so your latency can be reduced so this is a critical for the next generation services where you need a ultra low latency and the high reliability and this demands the efficient implementation of the algorithms or any kind of signal processing wireless communication algorithms on the edge so that's why there is a need of mapping of algorithms to architectures on the edge devices okay where what do you mean by edge devices where you have the limited resources size is small there is a constraint on the power consumption so you need to map it efficiently so you need to make sure that all your algorithms to architecture mapping is efficient also there are wide variety of edge devices so you need to make sure that your algorithm is mapped appropriately to the corresponding platform hardware platform being used so you need to understand the what is the hardware platform what are its features how you can efficiently utilize them to get the desired performance in terms of the area power delay and the accuracy another uh, uh, applique why we need to map the algorithms on the architecture is the evolution of the ai ml algorithms in every domain so if you see this uh, uh, 3gpp 3gpp is the standard body which develops the protocols or standards for 3g 4g and 5g so currently the standardization activities are going on for the 5g and if you see recently six months back uh, multiple companies who participates in the uh, uh, standardization activities they have now started exploring that how the conventional signal processing algorithms can be augmented or replaced with the ai ml algorithms to improve the performance of the wireless physical layer and the wireless physical layer is the layer which is implemented on the hardware like ASIC, fpj or the processor like qualcomm processor and the arm processor 
So if with this thing, we need to see that how the different signal processing block in the physical layer can be uh, replaced with the uh, corresponding AI ML algorithm. So that means there is a need of the efficient implementation of AI ML algorithms on the hardware. In the future, you will see that more complex AI ML algorithms will be developed, which will replace all the uh, AI signal processing algorithm with the uh, neural network. So initially, you will augment the signal processing with the AI ML. Later, you will replace the signal processing with the AI ML. And if you see the timeline of this uh, deployment, you can see that around five to six years down the line, there is a possibility that this will come into the practice. So that's why, again, mapping of AI, AI ML algorithms or any other algorithms on the hardware is important. Other applications, for example, if you take the ADA system, like the autonomous driving system, you have a lot of sensors. You need to collect the data from the sensors. You need to take the decisions and then uh, activate the actuators. So this thing cannot be done via cloud because you don't have that much time. You don't, you can't uh, tolerate that much latency. So that means you need a edge devices which are there on the car or near to the car itself capable of taking the decision mapping. And that's why you need to implement your algorithms on the edge devices and not on the clouds. Same thing in the uh, surv surveillance system. For example, you may have the thousands of cameras in the city and you need to track the movement of the cars, uh, different kind of entities or human being, how they are moving from one area to another. Now, in this case, each camera cannot capture the data and send all raw frames to the uh, city centers or your uh, central system. Uh, so the, you need to make sure that these cameras are intelligent enough so that they can send the, only the desired data to the centralized entity so that they need an additional processing capability at their uh, local level, that is at the age levels. Similarly, in the satellite communication, optical communication, you are handling a large amount of data and on the space, when you deploy something, you can't send the data to the uh, uh, center at the ground space and then uh, process the data. You need to make sure that you limit the data to be spent from the ground station to the space or from space to the ground station so that your communication bandwidth and latency is limited. So that means there is a need of age processing. Okay. So with all these examples, I think it is now clear that there is a need of requirement of mapping the algorithms efficiently on the edge devices. And this is what we are going to learn in this AELD course. So in the AELD course, we will be studying how to map the algorithms efficiently on the edge platform.